Guys, we're gonna try this one more time, take two. We uh, just tried to stream this about five minutes ago and I've never actually seen this game crash, but this game crashed. And we rebooted this thing uh, about three different times because it kept putting the Chicago Wolverines in the wrong uniforms. It kept putting them in weird random uniforms that I had never seen them wear before. Uh, so I'm gonna be very interested to see what uniforms they come out with here, but uh, but we're gonna see. So this is week 17. We're kicking it off. It's been an overcast day in Tampa Bay here, and it's the Tampa Bay Mutiny and the Chicago Wolverines. So it's gonna come down to this game, and basically what it comes down to here is the South is on the line in this one, and possibly. The National North is on the line in this game. And if you want to know all the scenarios, all the details in depth, hey, the uniforms actually work. Maybe Madden just need to crash to wake itself up. Um, if you want to know all the scenarios, we have a video up right now, Week 16 Recap, where you guys can look in and you can see all of uh, what happened in Week 16 and all the scenarios for Week 17. But to break it down with you, and I assume... You're going to see the playoffs here coming up uh, across the screen. The easiest scenario here is if Tampa Bay Mutiny wins, they win the South. You can see Tampa Bay, Atlanta. If Tampa Bay wins this game, they win the South. They go to the postseason. We have no need to stream the Atlanta game later in Week 17. If Tampa Bay loses, then we stream Atlanta's game. And if Atlanta wins... Then Atlanta wins the South and goes to the playoffs in what would be an epic collapse from Tampa Bay and an epic comeback from Atlanta because Tampa's lost like four in a row and Atlanta's won like four in a row for us to get to this point. For the Chicago Wolverines, they were once the class of the league. They were 9-0. and They went on a five-game losing streak before they finally ended it last week with the victory over Orlando. A victory here for Chicago over Tampa not only makes things more difficult for Tampa, but if Chicago wins and Mexico City loses, then depending on how the math works out, it's going to be up to Madden's math, and you see right there. If Mexico City loses, then Chicago, St. Louis, and Mexico City will all have the same exact record, and it's going to come down to Madden's tiebreakers to determine who gets the... Uh, playoff bid it would be the number two seed but who gets that playoff bid and who would go to the postseason getting a home field advantage up to the championship game and getting that first round of buy so wow there's a lot on the line in this game alone let's look at the injury report because i know we got a couple of them out there for the tampa bay mutiny they're still missing ahmad green so you saw the running back they had and chris carter also out barry sanders will be returning for the postseason they've been riding with todd Gurley in relief here so tampa bay it's win and you're in if you lose it comes down to atlanta in their game against the elks which you would think would be an easy win for atlanta so for tampa bay this is a must win for the playoffs for chicago it's not a must win but it's an opportunity if they do win to get a first round buy and to get at least one home field playoff game versus being a wild card team and going on the road so there is a lot on the line in this game as you look at the bottom of the screen there's going to be some big games we're going to stream with you. And most of them, we're going to go one by one. And there's a Howard who gets that pass from Steve Young for the first down. We're definitely streaming Sacramento and North Florida at the bottom of your screen. And we kind of went all over all these scenarios in our week 16 video. But determining, depending on how games go, determines how few or how many games we will stream here in week 17. Since there's no Thursday night, there's no Monday night game. It's kind of up to our imagination here. So it's, uh, you know, depending on if Sacramento wins, that's going to eliminate a lot of games. St. Louis and Mexico City is one we are definitely going to be streaming. 
Uh, but the Atlanta game is going to be determined if Tampa wins this one, whether we stream the Atlanta game or not. If Dallas wins their game, that will determine whether we stream the Columbus and Memphis game because that division is still up for grabs. So it's going to be a really interesting Week 17, as it always is in pro football. This is the RXFL. If you're just tuning in, we have a whole archive of videos for you guys to watch over on YouTube to get caught up on the season. This is our Legends relocation season. We made up some teams. We took some NFL uniforms and modified them and made up some different names. This is the Chicago Wolverines and the Tampa Bay Mutiny. Not the Bears, not the Buccaneers. Uh, we also relocated a bunch of the other teams so we can get some different nicknames and stuff. Uh, Steve Young. Incomplete, and that'll be fourth down for the mutiny. We relocated, and it's all legend rosters here. So, ooh, 59-yard field goal. They want to. They want to. They want to try the deep kick here. Let's see if uh, if Tampa Bay can get this of 59 yards, and it didn't look like it was going to be good, but it is going to be good. Let me uh. So the opening drive How about that points maybe not the seven they wanted but they'll take the three accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game that has to be Joe Theismann now about to step yeah, onto the field uh, we were just encouraging guys to watch all of what you've seen so far in the RXFL it has been an absolutely phenomenal season and we want you to go get the recap. That was Steve Christie, by the way, who drilled that deep kick for the Tampa Bay Mutiny in this big showdown between the Mutiny and the Wolverines. And these two could be matching up in the postseason. They are both in the National Conference. So this could be a game you see if Tampa Bay wins. You could see the return match coming up in the uh, playoffs here, coming up playoffs. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you for tuning in. As always, we are TB Sports 27, and we are wrapping up season one of our relocation football league. This is something I've always enjoyed doing, making up my own football league and playing both sides of the ball as Steve Smith with the grab from Joe Theismann. Uh, I've been doing this concept for years. I started it on uh, 2K5, on ESPN 2K5, and then I brought it over to the college football games, 07, 08, and then in 2014, where you can design a lot of the teams. Then I went to uh, All Pro Football 2K8, and now, um, you know, because I wanted to have more teams than just eight, which was the limit in All Pro 2K8, I, uh, I like the idea of in 2k8 of playing with legends which is something i hadn't done previously in my other leagues i was like wow playing with the legends is really fun there was a really good legends roster here unfortunately madden does not allow us to create our own team so we had to get kind of creative with how we made up teams such as the chicago wolverines and the tampa bay mutiny and we've done our creative best and here we are and now we are going to get ready for the playoffs here so if you want to see more of the rxfl hit the follow button here on twitch we stream everything live on twitch and then we upload it to YouTube, TV Sports 27, Sports Gaming on YouTube. You can subscribe and hit the thumbs up over there. If you're watching on Twitch, there's links in the About Me section, so it's really easy to see. And if you're watching on YouTube, then just subscribe and thumbs up. And, of course, check us out, patreon.com slash TV Sports 27. Theismann, he's going to run it. Uh, Patreon.com slash Sports 27 We encourage you guys to check that out. We uh, appreciate your support over there. If you're able to help out with the channel, we greatly appreciate it. and helps keep this channel alive. So any little bit that you can do, and, and we pay it back tenfold, we like to think, with the bonus content we give you guys. We allow you guys to request streams over there as well, depending on the level you're signed up on. We have a monthly streaming request thread and then if you're an ultra fan you straight up can request a stream once every two weeks when it's your turn on the list so uh go check out those uh, available sections maybe you don't want to see as much football you want to see some hockey well you can request that become a patreon ultra fan and of course we give our verbal shout outs to our patreon members at the highest level so mega fans and ultra fans justin russell 
Jonathan Harrigan, Mr. Maple, and K Duckman. Thank you guys so much for being Patreon subscribers at the very highest level. And now, let's get into this game. Let's focus on it. Tampa Bay and Chicago. The North, I mean, in the National, like, it is still up for grabs. The North is still up for grabs. The South is still up for grabs. The East is still up for grabs. We know that three teams from the North are going to qualify. Mexico City, St. Louis, Chicago. We just don't know what position they're going to be at. So there's no wild card spots left because you got three teams from one conference. So between Tampa Bay, Atlanta, and... Uh, um, uh, Columbus and Dallas winning your division is of the utmost importance here so here we go Theismann there is nothing and Theismann finally fires it to Steve Smith how about that by Joe Theismann oh what a gutsy throw by Theismann Todd Gurley, touchdown, Wolverines. Naruto, Naruto run. We're streaming this on July 2nd, so if you're a Crunchyroll subscriber, a lot of new anime started. The summer anime, summer 2023. Which one are you most looking forward to? I still got to finish. Uh, I have not started the new Demon Slayer season yet, but uh, who knows? Maybe maybe later today, huh? Overcast day and these overcast, overcast skies could... Uh, I mean, it could be overcast for Tampa Bay's season here. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive. Tampa Bay win and you're in. If they lose, we're streaming Atlanta and Salt Lake City with you guys. Haven Moses brings that one in for the first down. Asante Samuel brings him out of bounds. Hugh McEwheny in the backfield again in for the injured Ahmad Green. McEwheny, there is no edge rusher there. And McEwheny read that all the way. Bounced to the outside and got the first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Sacramento and the North Florida Cheetahs is going to be a huge one because if Sacramento wins, they end what has been a five-game losing streak for them. Sacramento was 8-2 and two at one point. They are now 8-7, and seven, which is insane. So they've lost five in a row. But that all doesn't matter. If they win in Week 17, they're in the playoffs. If they lose, we got three other games that we're going to stream with you because that opens the door for three other teams to potentially qualify for the postseason. It's kind of wild. Uh, but you go from 8-2 and two to a five-game losing streak. And then if you win in Week 17, you survive and you make the playoffs. So those are our must-streams for sure. Mexico City and St. Louis. And then the Dallas game, and then depending on how Dallas does and how Tampa does, we would bring you Atlanta, and we would bring you uh, Columbus. And then if uh, Sacramento loses, then we'd bring you all the other games right there. So depending on if you want to see more or if you want to see less, depending on how these teams do. And it's intercepted. Oh, my God. That was a rough one. Steve Young... Picked off in the end zone there by Willie Lehner. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. Wow. Slam dunk for points on this drive. Looking for Haven Moses. Throw an interception and they're going to come away empty. And Lehner just got right up in front, stole that one away. Out there now. 
That was a rough decision there by Steve Young with the playoffs on the line. And you're speaking of losing streaks here, Todd Gurley. You're looking at losing streaks, and Tampa Bay was another one that had this division in their hands, and Atlanta was so far back. And I'd have to look at what the, the, the record is, but it's Tampa Bay has, I think, lost three or four in a row, while Atlanta has won three or four in a row, which has put the South up for grabs here. And for Chicago, they're another team that suffered a mid I mean, Tampa Bay, Chicago, and Sacramento all suffered massive mid-season losing streaks here in the RXFL. Wide open is Anderson for the first down. Oh, they said dropped. I thought he dropped it for a second, but they just mean dropped like tackled. They give to Todd Gurley and... He's immediately hit in the backfield by DeMarco Ryans. Quick first quarter and an overcast day here in Tampa. Seisman just had all the time to step up in the pocket and connect with Steve Smith. So the first quarter winds down with a lot of control in this one with the Tampa Bay Mutiny trailing the Chicago Wolverines. Chicago has that control in their hands right now. He got the whole world in his hands. Yeah. Intercepted! Oh, he doesn't have the whole world in his hands. Mark Haynes trying to outrun Steve Smith. Touchdown, Mutiny! Tampa Bay looking to get the creamsicle into the postseason. The history, the XFL's Tampa Bay Vipers, five games they played. And then the XFL went under in 2020 because of the Backstreet Boys reunion tour. The team... Of course, went away. There was a new team, the Orlando Guardians. So the Tampa Bay Vipers came to the Revolution League for a year. They went in, and they were quarterbacked by one Bart Starr. He quarterbacked them, and he got them. A respectable record, but no playoffs, the Tampa Bay Vipers. So then the Tampa Bay Vipers bought out by a team led by Bruce Arians and Buccaneer Legends to bring the Tampa Bay Mutiny, which was the former soccer team. They took the name, the Tampa Bay Mutiny, and then you see a former Buccaneer, Warwick Dunn, coming out of the field. They took the name of the former MLS team because they wanted to have that pirate theme there. You know, the Vipers, the, the people liked it, but it wasn't Tampa Bay, so they settled on Mutiny, and they brought back on a loan because it was... Um, Bruce Arians, the you know the fans have always wanted to see the creamsicle full time. You're gonna get to see him in real life when the Buccaneers take on the Lions this year in football. But uh, they brought him back here and they said we're gonna give this Tampa Bay Mutiny team the creamsicle uniform. So we're gonna bring back a classic Tampa Bay name. And the Vipers were then rebranded as the Tampa Bay Mutiny with the classic creamsicle uniforms. And here we are. Chicago Wolverines, we've gone over their history. They were the Ann Arbor Annihilators. They were the dominant team in the Revolution League. Five years of having the top record in the league. They won just one championship, though, after some crazy disappointing exits in the playoffs, losing to lower-seeded teams. Finally got the job done in season four, and that gave, uh, oh, that gave uh, Dan Marino his first pro football championship as he was quarterbacking those Ann Arbor Annihilator teams. Of course, Marino would go to the other Chicago team, the Cougars. So in the Revolution League, you know, the uh, they had five successful seasons in Ann Arbor, but it's really hard to fill out the big house, and that was the obviously the goal, a very big goal, but to put them in a giant stadium like that and in a college city hoping to get 
football all year round in Ann Arbor. And like I said, f uh, five successful seasons, but ultimately it, it was tough to fill that big stadium. So here in the Revolution League, they decided to move to Chicago from Ann Arbor. But as a little nod to the former Ann Arbor Annihilators, they took the name the Wolverines because that's where they played. It was at the big house. And here you have the Chicago Wolverines. So there's my little... Uh, made up history of why they have the uniforms that they do since we can't create our own uniforms in Madden. So yeah. And we go back to the mutiny here. Mackie Henny. Oh! Junior Seau. Hello. That does him no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Second and nine now from the 21. Draw play, Mackey bounces to the outside. Stiff arm, not going to happen there. He's driven into the turf. Willie Laner, he wants another interception. Great example what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Play action, and Young going deep. Nope, incomplete. Wanted Julio Jones on that one. Defensively, but it falls incomplete. And we're doing a lot of punting right here on both sides of the ball, are we not? That Dallas-Vegas game is one that you guys are definitely going to be seeing on the channel here. And our attention shifts to Todd Gurley. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in this. A win for Dallas, and they clinch the National East, a loss, and then a victory for Columbus over Memphis. And Columbus has a shot. It's going to come down to math now. I wish, I really wish, I mean, you know, asking for a lot out of Madden, but it would be kind of cool if they gave us the playoff scenarios because I don't know what tiebreakers, like obviously head to head, but like when, because Dallas and Columbus have split the series, I don't know what all tie, I suppose I can Google it, but it's always like common opponents and division and non-division and points. And it's like to try to go in and figure all that out on your own, it would be nice if there was some way that the game just told you uh, what the tiebreaker scenarios were. Because even if Dallas loses and Columbus wins, that ties them for the same record, and that doesn't necessarily guarantee a postseason spot. So we could that could all be for naught. Uh, same thing here. We say Chicago wins. They might get a first-round bye. Well, if they win and Mexico City loses, then everyone is 11-5, and five, and it could still be Mexico City winning the division. So it might not even be for anything. So, you know, just would be nice if we had that option here. Seisman dumps it off to Gurley. Look at the speed of Todd Gurley. It was only ended up being three yards, but gosh darn, it was an impressive three yards, was it not? So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to Back to Gurley. And he's trying to barrel through, met by Neil Smith. So Chicago's in field goal range, at least, for Mason Crosby. But they want to get a touchdown out of it. Seisman finds Tyler Lockett, who's been a big part of this Wolverine offense. Of course, Joe Seisman, if you're familiar with the Revolution League, he had a brief stint when... The Omaha Firebirds cut loose with Randall Cunningham. And they went through their quarterback carousel trying to figure out who would be the new guy. And they went through Joe Theismann. They went through Archie Manning. And they eventually settled on Jeff Hostetler. But it was Manning for a time. And then it was a couple, uh, about a year and a half, I think, with Theismann. And then they went with, like I said, the Haas. And he won out and then... Here in the Revolution League, they moved out to Vegas. They moved to Vegas, become the Vegas Firebirds, got Aaron Rodgers, and, well, he still can't win. <laughs> and for Randall Cunningham, too, he had some bad years with the 
Firebirds, and then he would go on to Columbus, have a bit of a resurgence year, go to the postseason with the Columbus Crusaders. And then this year went to San Francisco with the San Francisco Demons, but uh, still, you know, could finish with a 500 record, but will not make the postseason. Touchdown, Todd Gurley. And that will give your Chicago Wolverines the lead. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. Extra point up and good by Crosby. And the lead is now 14 to 10. So a nice drive put together. 14 10 Chicago Wolverines here on this overcast day in Tampa. This is looking like a Monday night game. This is 1, 1 p.m. This is taken at his four. And, his and Westbrook going to get rustled into the turf there by Troy Vincent. A reminder, Tampa Bay win, and they're in. They win this game. They win the National South. If they lose and the Atlanta Dirty Birds win, then Atlanta wins the national south yeah, just something to build off of that's what they're looking for here we remind you that coming up at halftime we'll send you cross state at least that's how i think the tiebreakers work it would be egg on my face if tampa loses and then atlanta ends up winning and then not getting in the playoffs but um, I think the way the math works out is that's how it'd be. But again, it's going to be kind of up to the game. But easiest path is Tampa Bay win and get in. Partner as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. Steve Young, the lefty. And it's incomplete. Only three completions so far. You see there he is, Bruce Arians, who had a big hand in purchasing the Tampa Bay Vipers from the Revolution League and bringing him here into the RXFL and had a big hand in bringing back the creamsicle uniforms full-time for this Tampa Bay Mutiny team. And again, when looking for a name, they were looking, you know, pirate-themed, trying to get away from that Viper name. And, you know, folks said, hey, you know, we had that soccer team, an MLS team. It was the Tampa Bay Mutiny, which, you know, is very pirate-esque. And why not bring that in? Look at that. Nice catch by... Well, Stanley Morgan Jr. What other? I don't know. What would have been another good? Uh, the Swashbucklers? What would have been another good pirate-themed team for this Tampa Bay squad? There's the sack. Steve Young goes down. I think that was Lito Shepard, if I caught that number correctly. As the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now. Second and 18, 34 seconds to go here in the half. And Steve Young, it is bobbled and dropped by Julio Jones. Contact, no call, and it's third down. So third and 18 as Tampa Bay rolls down the field, but gets held out of the end zone here. Steve Young rolls out, and oh, are you kidding me? Asante Samuel, how did he get that? Two end zone interceptions for Steve Young. Wearing the creamsicle for the second time in his career. He just threw it too high for Haven Moses. Samuel jumped over the top. Look at this. Oh my god, he had Moses and it just got thrown a little too high. Look at and Todd Gurley has not been the starter all year long. You see his numbers in the 800. He's been in only halfway through the season for an injured Barry Sanders, but he's got almost a thousand yards rushing. So with this, Chicago is going to take us to halftime. And with this, we're going to say goodbye for today. For those of you watching on YouTube, we're going to come back tomorrow. You don't want to miss the second half because playoffs are on the line in week 17 in the RXFL. 
Tampa Bay win, and they're in for the National South. The National North still up for grabs with the Chicago Wolverines. If you're watching on Twitch, we're coming back in a couple of minutes for part two. Hit the like button, hit the follow button. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe and hit the like button. And check us out at patreon.com slash tbsports27. YouTubers, second half, coming your way tomorrow.